sorry, Luana, can you Yes, I can hear her as well. So maybe I'll just try to read the first question. Okay, so the first question is, um, how do your interests and skills align with the mission and vision of Proof of Humanity and or universal basic income? So, Wanu, um, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, a good, good question. Uh, so, as a starter, I think my interests and skills uh, align with either Proof of Humanity or universal income uh, or UBI. Uh, based on whatever, if the uh, community decides uh, whether or not that I could be part of the mission board. Uh, but from my perspective, um, uh, mainly from my technical skills and my interests, I think uh, I joined Proof of Humanity because I saw the potential of uh, like one of the first or maybe even the only ones uh, registries on a decentralized network that could solve the issue of uh, identity and not, well, not identity, but uh, yeah, identity as a human. Uh, uh, but then I really got uh, caught by the universal basic income implementation, and that's where mostly my heart lies. Uh, as many of you know, I'm already uh, working on version two of UBI and trying to put a lot of effort in that part. Um, so yeah, um, my interests and skills are mostly aligned with universal basic income, which of course relies on the technology uh, that makes proof of humanity work. Um, so yeah, pretty sure answer I think there's plenty of time. Thank you, Wanyu. How about we go to the next? And that will be uh, since we don't have Mad, sorry. Since we don't have Mad, um, Luis, can you please answer the first question? Yes, thanks, uh, Ning. Uh, so, what in, in terms of the set of skills that uh, align with, with Proof of Humanity. Uh, I have some transferable skills from my main job. I work, uh, I'm a veterinarian by, by formation, uh, but I've been working in, in, some, in, in research mainly, and that deals with complex projects and having to deal with, with, with complex ideas and research and asking the correct questions and getting to the bottom of, of of things do with evidence and main most of all is is doing long term uh, projections o over over time. So on the other hand, I I've been in the I've been a supporter and and helper in 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 open source projects and community projects since I was a kid basically. So that's that's the other set of skills that uh, would help. Um, uh, work a lot with uh, proof of humanity. My language knowledge, uh, I know five languages. Three are super good, but I'm learning uh, French, for example. That's the least I know of today, but it uh, helps me bridge the gap between different cultures and different visions uh, in general. So uh, most coming from from a South American country and living abroad a lot of time. Uh, that also gives me perspective to, to engage in, in cultural intelligence and, and see how others uh, can, um, can work together even through cultural differences. And is there a part B in this question? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's mainly main, most of it. So that's all would like to and also my 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 passion to build communities contrary to what may others say i the language experience and 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 the the ability to to build communities is the reason i i created so many uh, groups in telegram and in other platforms of proof of humanity to 
bring accessibility to the ones that not not only speak English or Spanish, for example. So that's that's one of the of the first things, and that's it. Thanks. Thank you, Luis. Now let's hear it from Santi. Oh, but sorry, we have to. Okay, thank you, Claire. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Um, well, I resonate uh, with, with some of the things the other candidates have said. I am a programmer by trade, so I am friendly with the code and I'm able to uh, interact and connect with many of the technical development skills that are required in order to move forward to, with both Proof of Humanity and UBI. Um, and also, um, uh, community community building has been at the core of my of my skills for for many many years in my career as well. I I, I have experience uh, building and contributing to projects that are open source that uh, build a community around them, and um, uh, I have been actively involved with Proof of Humanity since the get go, uh, trying to to rally people to test and discover and, and use this technology um and uh um yeah uh, um you know i i've been involved with ethereum for many years for the past four years professionally working with the ethereum community meeting a lot of developers in conferences around the world um uh, that's how i met with clement and uh, with the with fede and many of the cleros guys uh, and uh, of course, uh, last but not least, I think that uh, being able to amplify the message of proof of humanity over social media, uh, whether it's Twitter or uh, some other Instagram or some other networks, um, I, have, I have been able to build uh, an audience of people that are interested in these subjects, uh, that are interested in crypto, that are interested in, in learning about these technologies. And um, uh, I think that those are great skills to to have when it comes to to represent proof of humanity to the outside world, and uh, and yeah, regarding the the tasks involved for the mission board, uh, I think we, we we already some of us have accumulated the experience of being here uh, since the beginning for one year, uh, looking at the DAO grow, seeing the proposals evolve, understanding the how the Cleros governor works. Uh, all the different aspects that uh, make our community thrive. And uh, also I think that that's valuable experience looking forward, the fact that uh, we've been here since the beginning uh, and of, you know, we are all looking to keep on contributing to, to this great project. Awesome, thank you, Santi. Now let's hear it from Jean. Um, so how do how do my interests and skills uh, align with the mission? Um, I participate on a lot of different DAOs, and I'm constantly uh, trying to find uh, more uh, places where proof of humanity or UBI could fit. Uh, so uh, it's it, it's uh, very aligned with my interests because I believe that Proof of Humanity is a key part of uh, what, 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 what is being built right now for the future of uh, Web3 and basically the, the, the internet. Um, I'm, I've, I've not been uh, researching or learning about this for very long. I, I, I started learning about Ethereum maybe three years ago and just just um, uh, started to learn more about about it when I joined Proof of Humanity one year ago, but uh, it's been uh, I, I did I dedicate all, all my free time to it. Uh, so um, I try to join as many projects as possible and learn about it. And um, I believe that the skills that I've got from, from doing this uh, is that I can see uh, how other communities and other projects uh, handle their, their, their issues. And I can uh, help bring uh, a little bit of that to, to, to our community. And also, uh, I, I, I'm very interested 
in uh, building bridges between projects and proof of humanity is something that every project can integrate uh, a, a lot of uh, lots of project projects can integrate with uh, and it's uh, for me it, it will be very uh, important to have the, the, the mission board role uh, so I can uh, have some uh, seal of uh, legit uh, when talking with other projects. And, and of course, uh, I believe that anyone here in Argentina that has joined Proof of Humanity has seen uh, the impact that universal basic income can have on people's lives. And uh, it's something that it's worth uh, working for and, and, and fighting for. That's basically it. Cool, thank you, Jean. Now let's hear from our next candidate, Clement. Hi everyone. So, can you hear me? Test, test, can yep. you hear me? Yep, yep. very clear. <laughs> I was not seeing the printer going on. So, hi everyone. Um, so first, I will talk on the interest. So why I, I was really excited by Proof of Humanity. So as you know, Proof of Humanity started mainly with uh, a simple idea of Vitalik in some, uh, some of his slides in the Vitalik talk. And I was like, oh, well, that, that's super uh, interesting. And that's linked to Claro, so let, 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 let's make it. Um, I, I think civil resistance is something which is very important uh, for Web3, uh, because now Web3 is very good for uh, faceless financial uh, interactions. Uh, but as soon as you need to, to know who you are interacting with, when you want to have reputation, like for example, with Salbon token that we are now working on, um, you need to have uh, a mechanism uh, which is civil resistant, where you can't just wipe your identity and make a new one. So that's why I was so excited uh, when I, I learned this, uh, this startup ID from Vitalik and then I pushed it uh, to, be a, to be a project and to develop it and to release it with uh, other people of the team. Um, on UBI, uh, well, I've been like a supporter of UBI uh, even before uh, I get in, into crypto, uh, when I was at the private party. Uh, at that time, we were seeing UBI more as something like made by the government. Uh, but now like my vision has quite changed and I don't expect much from the government. I really think that if we want to make good things, we, we have to build it ourselves. So I think we should really have this kind of building mentality instead of uh, asking mentality uh, towards government. So I think this UPI being created uh, like uh, as an independent project out of nothing, uh, I think it's very interesting and I hope it will succeed. Um, now about the skills, well, I think I'm quite suited to work on proof of humanity uh, because uh, I know how to, to build systems like the decentralized systems. Uh, I can have this kind of uh, adversarial mindset to see oh, what an attacker will try to do to this system. So how can you prevent it? Uh, so this mainly like economic uh, game theory, game theory uh, uh, skills, I think are very important when you are working on proof of humanity. Uh, also even just the tech like coding, smart contract, is also something which is very important. You may think, oh, well, it's a mission board. Yeah, but the mission board, uh, they have to interpret uh, some decision. And sometimes this decision uh, can be highly technical decisions. Uh, and finally, uh, about ecosystem building, because proof of humanity just itself, it doesn't do anything. Uh, we gave an example, uh, UBI. So UBI is something which is uh, useful on top of proof of humanity. And we, I want to have more projects uh, using proof of humanity. Thanks for that, Clement. And sorry, by the way, I had a lab because of the technical issue with the computer, but thank you. Now let's proceed with the next question. Okay, so question two, it's going to be the same. Um, so it's going to be one 
will be the first to answer. One key aspect of being a mission board member is to be highly trusted. What makes you eligible for that? Thanks. Um, I think I can answer these by just saying, again, talking about uh, what I'm doing on the uh, UBI version to smart contract, which actually requires to be highly trusted because uh, we're basically coding uh, the or making changes on the current uh, on the core functionality of the UBI token, which is uh, one of the the main product uh, behind that, that was created uh, with proof of humanity. Uh, and so by upgrading and making changes to that smart contract requires high trust uh, from the community because not everyone is a developer. So not everyone uh, has the knowledge to understand what's going on on the code. Um, so yeah, I think that's, I think that would be uh, my my answer mainly. And then I could say that uh, I, I've been gaining some trust in the community uh, by um, in having exchange of opinions, uh, talking, participating in the community, um, uh, even helping people on board, uh, which is not my main uh, my main area. I know like Balin, Mati, and Rico have been great at doing that. Uh, but yeah, I think most of my high trust has come from uh, the coding part, working on the smart contract of PDI. Great. Thank you so much, Wanu. Now let's hear it from our next candidate, Luis. Yes, thank you. I hope that the audio comes all right because I'm on the streets now. Uh, the high trust comes from simply my trajectory and that I, everything I do is in the open and in an open way, you can check the logs of every chat that I've been to, every action that I've taken as an admin in the Proof of Humanity Telegram groups. Um, so the presence just being there with the community, with the thousands and thousands of uh, messages, replying, creating content that helps onboard uh, people, as as Manu mentioned, eh, Juanu, not Manu. Uh, so all of that, I think, that gets uh, the an idea of how how I can be of trust uh, in the community. And I don't say one thing and then something else in in the back. So I think my openness, my sincerity, sometimes can be. Um, um, shocking in some aspects but i think it's it's better to 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 have the blunt truth in in some aspects than to have a nice talk and then act differently in the background so sorry about the background noise um the other thing is uh basically the 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 what i Besides the, my actions within Proof of Humanity, my actions outside Proof of Humanity have always been to have uh, the to be a trustful person uh, all on, on all the places I've been and I had some impact into. So that would be my answer to that question. All right, thank you, Luis. Now let's hear it again from Sandy. Uh, hi everyone. Well, uh, I guess uh, that uh, similar to Luis answer, I have a public record um, on the on social media on on different chat channels of uh, what I have, how I have been actively involved with the project, and uh, my views are usually very public, um, and uh, I try to share as much as possible regarding you know what excites me about proof of humanity and how it can enable universal basic income. From a technical angle, I find myself uh, collaborating on a weekly basis uh, with everyone who is uh, involved in the development of both Proof of Humanity and, and UBI. Um, I, uh, you can also look at my track record on GitHub, uh, where I have actively contributed to the creation of uh, the UBI smart contract that uses uh, Proof of Humanity. 
and uh, many other projects related to proof of humanity as well. Um, so um, uh, I try to to stay in touch with the latest developments. Uh, um, you know, we I, I I check with Clement and with Pede and some of the Cleros folks how things are moving on their end uh, in order to to see how they are pushing forward their development of uh, you know the, the next version of proof of humanity or what features are being considered for for a future upgrade. Um, and yeah, I, I I try to be easy to reach for anyone in this community. I'm always willing to answer direct messages, uh, um, uh, tweets, you know, uh, I, I, I try to be put myself at the service of this community. And last but not least, uh, it's to, in this 2022, where we all go back to building stuff again, pretty much every single project I'm involved with uh, is in some way or another connected to proof of humanity and UBI. Um, um, uh, just to give a few examples, uh, we recently announced with uh, Pope Francis an NFT collection that will keep uh, a balance in UBI tokens. We, uh, um, I have partnered up with the Danish architect uh, Bjarke Ingels to work on a metaverse that will use uh, UBI as uh, its utility token. Um, uh, we are talking with some uh, pro infrastructure projects like side chains and layer two technologies so uh, they can connect with proof of humanity and use uh, human validators um, i think that there's a lot of very exciting ideas that can be pushed forward with uh, with the proof of humanity protocol i think we haven't even seen the beginning of it yet there's a lot to to get built and um, I, I first and foremost put myself at the service of this community and make sure that every single project I'm involved with, the number one condition for me to get involved in those projects is if that project is going to support UBI and proof of humanity in one way or another. And uh, I think that's, that's a, a salient aspect of my track record and my involvement with this project. Thank you. Thank you so much, Santi. Now Let's hear it from Jean. Hi. Uh, so about this question, I, I think it's uh, it paints uh, a, like a picture that might not be uh, completely um, completely um, correct because uh, even though uh, being a mission board uh, is uh, the, the mission board members are are a set of trusted members. Uh, the idea of having a mission board is to have uh, basically something that was not uh, um, that the, the the other functions of the DAO could could not take care of. So th this is a minimally trusted function. Uh, so the 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 my idea uh, is that uh, the the these roles shouldn't have uh, sh shouldn't have shouldn't be uh, like have a high trust so in the in the future or, or ideally we should uh we should not have any position with that requires a high trust in, in the DAO we should only have positions that require uh the the minimal um, um, amount of trust so i don't want to people to to need to trust me a lot <laughs> Uh, and, or no one in the DAO. I think it's important for the DAO for for for, for it to 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 run smoothly without uh, requiring high trust. So, but if he, if anyone wants to trust me, uh, you can check my my history in the chats. I've been particip participating on a lot of discussions, and I always try to to. Uh, for example, explain uh, what uh, each roles are supposed to be, and um, and that's basically it. I I, I, I have uh, uh, I, I believe it's it's very easy to see my my points of view uh, when you when, when you check my history, and I'm always available on Twitter, Telegram, and and. Uh, even on uh, discourse. That's basically. All right, thank you, Jean. 
Now let's hear it, hear it again from Clement. So I will uh, join uh, Shin with that. Uh, like the mission board is not something which is like really trusted by the protocol. Uh, actually, it doesn't even have any impact uh, at the smart contract level. Like it's not even something the smart contracts are looking at. So it's not a multi-sig, uh, it's not a direction board. Uh, I think a mission board is more of a facilitator, uh, which is there to interpret proposals. Um, and uh, it, it can like, it helps the DAO run smoothly, uh, but it cannot prevent the DAO from, uh, from running because if a mission board interpretation uh, is not aligned with what the DAO meant, the DAO can make another proposal to overrule the mission board. So it's, it's not really high trust, it's more like a facilitator. Um, now, wh why should you trust me? Well, I, w I was really there like from the start, you know, like I I'm really, I'm really, uh, in front of, of proof of humanity, you know, like uh, w when you create something, it's a bit like, like your baby. So you really want your baby to, to go, to succeed, to, uh, to evolve. Uh, so you, you don't want to, to arm it, obviously. Um, now, what, what are the proof? Well, you can see uh, all that was built. Uh, and for now, you know, like you didn't have any malicious thing uh, from, from the team, you know, like everything was always built honestly and everything was always built uh, working. Um, and uh, we've been working on stuff which were highly critical, you know, like mechanism design, smart contracts, all of that, if you get them wrong, or if you even put a bug on purpose, you know, like you, you can break everything. So by showing that uh, in some way I could have broken everything and I didn't do it, uh, that can like sh show uh, that I should be uh, of high trust. Um, also, you know, I, I'm always there when something happens, uh, when something critical happens, like for example, when we got attacked, when the IPFS got attacked, and we had to solve this like as, as fast as possible uh, because uh, we are losing da data and some profile were becoming invalid. Uh, so I was there, not, not just me obviously, but we, we, with the team uh, to solve this issue and uh, get everything run as smoothly as possible, like uh, reimbursing people. Uh, also, you can see that I'm uh, well quite uh, active in, uh, in the community, always sharing my thoughts on uh, what is being proposed and talked even if sometimes it may be something which are hard to hear. Like, it's very easy to be like a yes man and say yes to everything. Uh, but uh, sometimes you need some people to say, well, okay, uh, this is good for that, but this is bad for this. And you need to have uh, this kind of, uh, of voice. Otherwise, you know, like it's, uh, it's like a tyranny of, of chaos. You know, everyone is voting everything. Everyone is accepting everything. And, and in the end, uh, you don't really have any any coherence uh, on uh, what is being done and executed and in the resulting system. Uh, so I think for, for all of that, for what I've built and for uh, what I'm uh, I'm doing in the governance, uh, I think uh, you, you should trust me. But that's up to you. All right. Thank you so much, Clement. Now let's proceed to the next question. Okay, let me maybe change the word issue there. Let's just say, what concern in the community do you feel strongly about? So it can be one or more than one. So let's go back to Wanda, Wanda please. Thank you. Um, definitely, uh, for me, this question is definitely the biggest issue that can show you the most. Understanding, uh, mostly on the technical perspective, uh, most of the people joining the protocol are not on the same side. So uh, those of us who do, who do have a certain degree of understanding uh, how blockchain, smart contracts, even code works, uh, can help uh, a lot to help people interpret certain things, but even on a greater perspective, help them learn how to do it. Uh, so that they don't have to be like like Jim or the other that they have to trust someone else. Um, even on the bigger picture, uh, that makes sense. Uh, and of course, from that point on, uh, that could help solve many other issues, which get uh, basically are uh, a direct uh, impact on not 
definitely uh, the technical understanding of things is one of the biggest issues for me. All right, thank you, Wanu. Now let's hear it from our next candidate, Luis. Yes, thank you. Uh, again, sorry about the audio. I, there are buses coming through. Uh, the main issues in the community is that usually because of the high appeal that UBI has over uh, people that are on low research, uh, low income uh, strata of the society, uh, most of these people uh, come into the project without any knowledge about Web3, decentralization, and how to even operate with wallets and the recording of the video submission, the, all the onboarding process. Uh, those were the first things I noticed when I joined. Uh, it was hard to get information and hard to to do things in the in the proper way. Uh, luckily, over time, what we've done is to build a, a strong community, a collaborative community that has been producing an endless uh, amount of material that help people that are join maybe the, in the for the first time the decentralized universe and operating with crypto assets and help them to have the best experience that they can. I think the merit is the creation of the UBI manual, the, the, the levels of the, that we try to, to make on both channels, English and Spanish, but for now, the huge amounts of success that the predefined levels of knowledge that we have on the Spanish channel has, have helped people to slowly but surely get into the universe uh, of uh, decentralization, uh, blockchain, and another, another aspects of proof of humanity, and learn. Uh, we've seen the progress of people that know, knew nothing about it, and with time, they, they, they are very comfortable uh, doing, doing stuff with, with, uh, with Proof of Humanity and, the, and UBI. And we inspire people with that to, for them to join as well and create this positive feedback that has uh, led up to the community we have in, in the Spanish channel mainly. We are 9,000 people uh, and growing uh, ever since the, the start of the project. So that's that's one of the great issues that we had and we're improving more and more each time. That's it. All right, thank you. Thank you, Luis. Now let's hear it from Sandy. So um, I think that, you know, uh, we are a young project uh, we've been live for one year, uh, so it reminds me of you know the first years of Bitcoin or maybe the first years of Ethereum, where we have much more promise than present in what we're doing. But I think the tremendous we have is enormous because of you know uh, social applications like proof of humanity can really achieve wonderful things. Um, I I think that at least for me one of the most challenging aspects that we face is that we need a strong uh, UBI token. Um, obviously, we're in a better market now. Uh, it's going to be very tough out there. We don't know for how long. We don't know how bad this is. But um, obviously, you know, great projects build resilience during bear markets. And I hope that with uh, POH and UBI, we can, we can do just that. Um, how we can strengthen the case of UBI? Well, obviously building projects that increase the utility of the token, projects that go range from, uh, as I described in the previous uh, question, that range from metaverses to NFT collections, to DeFi protocols, to uh, rollups or layer two technologies, uh, finding places where we can make the UBI token much more useful uh, and thus uh, increase the demand for the token, I think is 
going to definitely help the project a lot because uh, I think proof of humanity needs a strong UBI and and, and UBI obviously needs a, a civil resistant proof of humanity, like the the need that each project has has for 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 each other is the symbiosis is is you know, really very clear and, and definitely there. And you know, if in the future we have a proof of humanity on a layer two uh, with low gas, uh, with a, an affordable deposit cost, uh, suddenly uh, and with a strong UBI where people can expect uh, getting from, I don't know, 100 to $400 a month, something like that. Uh, then the incentive to sign up to Proof of Humanity is much more attractive. Uh, the ability to do it is much more feasible. Um, I'm not, you know, and I'm sure that we'll see like the work that Nico Bilinkis and Apps are doing, improving the interface uh, and many of the things that the community is building around the the proof of humanity. I think that you know we will we can definitely be in a much better place. Uh, so that's that's a key key challenge, and I don't think it's, it's easy. You know, building crypto projects is very hard. Getting traction, getting users, teaching about these new tools is it's not easy. It requires constant education, constant teaching. Uh, but you know, in our first year, we have seen some miracles happen. The emergence of the proof of integrity DAO, which is uh, has gone already three or four times, if I recall correctly, to a slum in Argentina, uh, the, 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 the same neighborhood that Vitalik visited when he was there. And they are teaching the kids and the teenagers to use crypto, to learn how to save, to learn how to invest, and creating their profiles on Proof of Humanity. And you know, if you look at uh, one of the videos that I did recently where we have some testimonies uh, directly from the users of Proof of Humanity, you can tell that we're definitely impacting people that really need this this kind of technology or this kind of money in their lives so uh i think that, you know we're in a bear market we need to build resiliency and we need to build period uh we need to you know in, engage with other communities engage with other projects uh, champion uh, proof of humanity and ubi so it can be integrated to any web 3 slash web 2 project that is out there um I think that we this is something that we need to do as a community. We need one voice is not loud enough. We need to have many, many voices and many, many champions uh, that are pushing for uh, proof of humanity to be never found as a standard to verify humans on the internet everywhere. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, I mean, uh, and do it with responsibility and make sure that the, the technological decisions are sound that the financial decisions are sound. Uh, you know, we want to be, we, we don't want to be another Terra, another Luna. Um, we want to build a solid project that can sustain itself in adversarial market conditions. And, uh, you know, when, when better days come, we'll, I am sure that we will have a much more stronger UBI and, and, and proof of humanity uh, serving the community and the larger Ethereum slash crypto ecosystem altogether. Um, but yeah, it's, it's I think it, my focus and my priority is, is, is uh, enabling uh, integrations and, and building uh, with UBI and, and Proof of Humanity. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Now let's hear it from G. Hi. Um, so the, the issues there, I believe that uh, the community care more about uh, are, of course, uh, the price of the UBI token, because it's what attracted a lot of people uh, uh, to the project in, in the first place. Uh, also, the difficulty in registering, uh, that's something that uh, Santi mentioned that Nico Bilinkis is uh, working on and also other members of the community. And um, the, one, of, one of the issues that, um, that also people get a lot, uh, very upset is the existence of uh, sock puppets uh, or basically accounts that are managed by other people. And this is some, this is, is a very complex issue, very difficult. Uh, we can, we, I believe most of the community has been discussing it for 
almost a year now and, and there's no clear solution, no clear uh, answer, but that I think it's worth uh, uh, pursuing because it's, um, it's a core, um, a core ideal of the project that, uh, that the, the control of the account also should basically map to each person, right? Uh, but, but I, I, yes, I believe these are the three issues that I see people sharing a lot uh, in the current community, but also there are uh, issues that people that do, did not join Proof of Humanity that they care a lot. Uh, for example, some people don't, don't want to, to, to be doxxed and uh, they, they want to expose their face and, that's, uh, and they don't join because of that. And I believe that there's a lot to communicate uh, about uh, the possibilities of not using your, your, your not, not having to use your real name and also the solutions that are being, are being worked on by uh, uh, the Cleros team and other teams uh, that use uh, zero knowledge proofs to uh, anonymize the, the identities and also allow, allow uh, uh, decentralized apps to use the, these identities in, a, in an anonym, uh, anonymous manner. Uh, I believe this this is something that we can help with right now, uh, promote the, the these ideas. And yes, that, that that's it for me. Thank you, Gene. Now let's hear it from Clement. So I think like the main issue that we have to always focus on is make it secure. So like proof of humanity. It's a civil resistant list of human. If it's not civil resistant, well, it, it's worthless. You know, like it's just costing a bit of gas and making some fun video. So you really need to always have that in mind. Keep it secure. Um, we've got a lot, a lot of sock puppeting. I think that was the main sort of attacks, and that's quite a surprise because that's not something we really thought when we made Proof of Humanity. Uh, that People will try to just like pay people instead of trying to attack the registry. I think we actually never saw any attack other than stock repeating. So I think stock repeating is like most important uh, issue which needs to be resolved, uh, which is like people paying other people to get profiles. And um, I'm not the one, only one thinking that, like in the recent article on the decentralized society, uh, like Glenn, Puja, and Vitalik, uh, they, they speak about it and they say, okay, like poor personhood, uh, it's only decreasing the cost of attack uh, because you can always bribe people to, to, be, to be an account for you. So that's really like what I, I think we should focus on in terms of the security. Um, now, uh, the other thing that we want, uh, we want something secure, but we also want something used. So currently, I think we have a really good uh, internal community, you know, like proof of humanity and related project, you know, like BI and projects which are popping up from Pro of Humanity, uh, I think that's very good. But I think what you may be lacking um, is uh, external outreach. Like we want other projects which are not necessarily coming from the Pro of Humanity ecosystem uh, to also be using Pro of Humanity uh, because, okay, like having projects from Pro of Humanity is good to, for, as a start, uh, but you cannot achieve uh, like complete, uh, like the complete potential of proof of humanity if we just stay between people of proof of humanity. So I would really would like to see more integration, uh, more interactions uh, with other projects uh, which uh, could use proof of humanity. Uh, now one last potential issue that needs to be solved is, uh, well, registration, like getting more people to, uh, to well, register in proof of humanity. And uh, now I think the main uh, blocker to that is uh, well, the, the, cost, the gas cost of registration. Uh, so that's why we need to work on having uh, layer two or in the meantime, before layer two are already like noisy chain uh, solutions. So making proof of many multiple chain uh, to really decrease the cost of registration. Uh, so that would be the three, the three main issues, like keeping it secure from self-repeating, uh, keeping it cheap so that people can register 
and uh, having interaction with other projects which would be using common humanity. All right, thank you. Thank you, Clement. Now let's go to the fourth question. <laughs> By the way, uh, um, really thank you guys for spending the time with us today for almost one hour. We only have prepared five from the set of questions we received. So now let's go to four. So this one was talked about from the last community call. So gener the general sentiment of the community is to have a product manager. How do you think should we proceed in hiring one? Uh, please, uh, you may go ahead, one. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah, so definitely hiring is one of the hot topics of Proof of Humanity. Um, I really think that the mission board should have, should not have a say uh, on this, but each of the members of the mission board should have the same say uh, as each individual on the community. So, um, of course, hiring uh, any kind of help, be it a product manager, uh, uh, moderators, uh, social media, uh, developers, uh, it's, it's a huge task and it's impossible to have the entire community be in charge of uh, doing interviews, right? So, which is one of the main uh, things that have been questioned. I think there should be, uh, of course, some techniques, uh, mechanics implemented that was the right way to do it. One of them, I'm just thinking out loud right now, is uh, something similar to what's going on right now, where people just send their questions and through a moderator, uh, those questions would be uh, picked, voted, and then asked to whoever the hire is. And then, of course, the hire itself should be voted by the entire community after making that decision. So similar to how we are picking the mission board members, I think the same should go for uh, picking any kind of hire. Of course, there are a lot of uh, things to take into consideration, like uh, not everyone knows what it takes for a product manager to be a good product manager or even a product manager at all. Um, and the same is true for each of the different uh, profiles that would be higher. So definitely uh, we need some sort of framework in there. And uh, yeah, I don't think there's that the current uh, framework for hiring is well set uh, since most people, well, not most people, but the communities on different places, whether this is correct or is this, or is not correct? So definitely working on a framework to hire people, um, having a good mechanic to not make everyone, uh, or maybe try to get the people who has the most understanding on, on top, uh, so that uh, we can make smart decisions. Uh, that's it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Wanyu. Now let's hear it from Luis. Yes, thanks, uh, uh, Ning. Um, the, pro the, the procedure, uh, first of all, what I agree 100% that the, the mission board does not exactly uh, need to chime in on, on what the process should be unless there is a conflict. Uh, what, what is important is that we need to learn the lessons from the first attempt to hire the, the product managing, uh, the product managers. Uh, it's all in the thread. Everyone can go and read what happened. It, it's it's quite in the open. I we'll think uh, going forward, what the process should be is first of all open. Uh, second of all, within a fixed time, because there is the risk of of a process of the selection process being stalled, just because one influential member does not think that. Uh, that particular candidate is is suit for it and is waiting for others that might fall in within that particular person. So fixed time open and the interviews uh, should be open as well. And in in the end, it should be the community and and the humans voting uh, for the the candidate. Uh, going with uh, um, experts' opinion on what the candidate uh, abilities and skills are. So it's not a popularity vote, should be an educated vote based on, on experts' opinion on what each of the candidates are. 
the selection process should also be open and fit to what the 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 post is about so uh, a correct uh, evaluating tests should be made and uh, they sh and should be fair for first of all and that's it learn from the lessons go to the phone and check what happened with the last time we attempted this and and move on from there All right, thank you, Luis. Now let's hear it from Santi. Hi, Santi. Are you still there? Oh, sorry, I forgot to press the button. I was talking to myself, <laughs> okay. I guess. Um, <laughs> So I, I definitely favor a, a, a bounty program where uh, everyone that has been contributing and allocating time of their life to the success of the uh, DAO, to the success of the community, to the success of Proof of Humanity, that uh, they can be rewarded by the DAO in that regard, uh, whether you know that person has been contributing or, or, or that group of people have been contributing uh, to groups that have been uh, helping people get access to the deposit or whether it has been groups that have are trying to uh, coordinate vouching among users or whether it's uh, community management on social media or in telegram or different networks or uh, development work uh, people who have been actively working on the proof of humanity smart contract or the ubi smart contract uh, like technical work, uh, you know, specific contributions that we can verify and see on GitHub. If those people want to get rewarded by the DAO in some way or another with a with a proposal in that regard, I think that's a, a valid mechanism to to help you know those who are supporting the project. That said, um, regarding you know the mechanism to hire like a a project manager or uh, have like an in-house team i think that remains a challenge for us uh clearly we haven't been able to find the a proper mechanism uh at the end of the day where we you know we we have some candidates we made some offers but at the end of the day you know those candidates actually chose to keep on contributing without strings attached to the to to, to the dao itself um so uh, it's it's. Uh, I think this is a common problem that I actually talked about it with other DAOs. Uh, I am very close to the founders of Decentraland, and uh, they have been facing similar struggles. Um, ultimately, uh, I think that uh, uh, you know when it comes to technical jobs, it's good to have a technical experienced person on the other side of the table interviewing and evaluating the skills and the capacity of that person uh, smart contract development is a highly technical skill um, and you know choosing that person through through voting uh, it's it's you know I, I, I'm not sure if, if it can lead to the best possible outcome uh, because it's a you know you want uh, when you engineer a plane you really want to make sure that you're electing the most qualified person uh, Voting is uh, usually much better suited for difficult choices than for easy choices. And I think uh, hiring a, a solid engineer is much more of an easy choice where you want to have a technical expert evaluate that person. And it's not that much of a hard choice where, you know, uh, there are different trade-offs and it's hard to evaluate something. Um, I think that we should rely on some of the leadership uh, we have uh, in order to do that, um, but of course, uh, I think that uh, you know, having a bounty program or having mechanisms where we can reward with the DAO the contributions that are ongoing and existing to the project itself, that should also be on the table. And I would encourage anyone in the community to build proposals in that direction. Uh, so, so it doesn't have to be uh, one way or another. You know, we can complement the way we work together. Right. Thank you, Santi. Now let's hear it from Jean. So uh, regarding hiring a project product manager, I believe that uh, the process uh, that, that um, 
that we have written in the uh, that we have voted in the HIP uh, is a pretty minimal process. So it just uh, requires people to basically make a post and uh, ask other people to interview them. So it's the, I believe that the, the, the main idea was to, 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 to let the community handle, but at the, at the time we had only a couple of members, uh, like, like the community was much smaller than what we have now. So uh, uh, one of the things that there I believe it's very important right now is that we have a, a um, an environment that is welcoming to 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 other uh, collaborators, uh, where people don't see that they will be in the middle of a fight uh, of the community or that the, there's uh, interests uh, going on. And so. I believe that uh, it's important to have the, 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 this kind of environment to attract people and to make the product manager feel uh, comfortable uh, in, in the community and feel that the community will not be, be micromanaging or uh, being uh, super pushy or, or, or being um, that, that, that will have uh, space for the product manager to do their, their, their job. Uh, I don't think the interview process, that every step of the interview process should be super open because uh, I believe lots of candid candidates will, will not apply if there, there is a requirement. Of course, uh, in, in the end, the, 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 the hiring is uh, part of uh, <coughs> the community and, 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 and I believe that the, the process uh, expected right now is that they should be voted. But uh, I don't think Every part of the process should be uh, should be uh, open and transparent, but uh, only the results, and that's what uh, written in the HIP. And also, um, I think that uh, that the, the 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 process that that we have right now, we don't we didn't establish a a, a date. Uh, I don't think that's a, a requirement, but we might uh, need to establish like the minimum requirements. Uh, but, but I don't know how to do that yet, but uh, I believe that's, that's something that we can think about. Thank you, Jean. Now let's hear it from Clement. Yeah, this question is quite interesting because in the first one where we start to see some uh, divergence between the candidates, um, so on this one, I will uh, I will side uh, with Santi and Chin, uh, and not with the, the first uh, candidate speaking about it. Um, actually, I'm the one who made the HIP for hiring. Uh, I think the two positions that I set, I determined were the good position to hire, but I think uh, the process that I I proposed uh, was not a, a good process. <coughs> no, was not a good process to hire. Uh, at the time, I was quite like excited or I like to prove humanity for one person, one vote. And I got too excited and proposed to use it for, for stuff where it shouldn't be used. Um, so what happened basically is you got some candidates uh, who were already like acting a bit like politician, not really collaborating with the, with the team and, and more trying to get elected by popular vote without, uh, without having the skills. Um, you got some candidates which were bad, you already get that, you know, like that most of the candidates are bad, that's common. Uh, you got some candidates which were good uh, that I got, that I interviewed, uh, like the first interviews. And then after when I asked them, okay, no, you have to make your application uh, on the forum in front of everyone, uh, well, you know, like they dropped off, like they didn't want to be involved in uh, such uh, a process, which I think was too adversarial and too political for them and too public for them. So sometimes people need to choose to, to build stuff. They don't need to be, to be politicians. They don't need to be public. Like they don't even need to show their face. But like at Carol's, we have some people working with us and I never saw their face. And they are not really talking in public much, but they are very good workers. Uh, so I think this process was, was very wrong. And that, that's my fault because I'm the one who proposed it. Um, Another thing we got, we got also the candidates, which were good, uh, really interested in the project, but then they saw 
uh, what was happening with the process and that also they saw that proof of humanity was very hard to move, like hard to move the way they wanted them to move. And so they ended up making another project. Well, this, this project uh, like failed uh, recently, uh, but that's also like a, a, big, uh, a big loss. So probably like hiring is probably the stuff we, we failed the most. And, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, so I think what we should do now is, is to do like Santi and Shin said, like don't see it as a, as a political position. Have a small group uh, who are given uh, the task to hire people. And at the end of the day, yeah, you put it in the DAO, you ask the DAO to confirm that decision. But hiring is not something which can be done with, with a crowd like that. Um, you know, like, it's same like for, for states, you know, like for the state, okay, maybe you vote for like member of parliament, sometimes even the president, uh, but you don't vote for ministers, uh, you don't vote for public servants, uh, maybe except if you are in the US. And, and I think that's the way it should be. Like, I think hiring should not be a, a political task. We still want the DAO to have the final word, so the DAO can, should be the one who can validate what has been proposed uh, by your hiring team, but I think it should be handled by your hiring team. And we've seen like having it with the DAO for one year did not lead to results, so I think uh, now it is time to learn our lesson and, and to change the process. Thank you. Thank you for that, Clement. Now, um, we are down to the last question. Thank you, everyone, for staying with us. We're almost Actually, one hour now, but this last question is really interesting too. And that is, if um, you are a candidate because you have made a significant contribution to the DAO, if you are not elected, do you see yourself continuing your efforts to help? If not, what can prevent you from doing so? Um, let's hear it from Wanu. Thanks. I'll just read in the question. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, so the, uh, yesterday we had also uh, a small debate, too, on the Spanish group. And one of the questions was, uh, why do you think you should be elected? And my answer was, I don't think, I don't know if I should be elected. Uh, I definitely am um, uh, being here. Because I see myself uh, useful, I see the community uh, trusting in me, and basically uh, I was invited to to participate as a candidate. So this basically uh, gives the answer <clears throat> to this question, which is uh, I was already doing what I'm thinking I will do uh, if I'm elected as a mission board. Maybe as a mission board I could have uh, some sort of more uh, veracity or trustness from external uh, actors, people who uh, maybe sometimes I do talk, like like Santi said, we sometimes connect with other technologies uh, with Santi and I and, and go over uh, different things we could build. And maybe by stating that I'm part of the Mission Board of Proof of Humanity would give more uh, veracity or trustness to, to what we're doing. But in the end, um, if I am mission board or if I'm not, uh, it will be the same to me. I will continue doing what I'm doing, uh, which is currently coding, building stuff for Proof of Humanity. Uh, as some of you know, I started with Posta, uh, which then led me to meet Santi and the rest of the team and started working on UBI V2. And definitely there are lots of ideas that are coming that we want to implement. And that will not be, uh, those will not be, uh, stopped or impacted if I'm not selected as a member. As a board member. Uh, so yeah, that's all. Thank you so much, Juanu. Now let's hear it from the weeks. Thanks, uh, Ning. Uh, I think I have a share of responsibility on making Juanu as a candidate. This question is super easy. I, I, I The fun I have every Wednesday in the community calls and that without or with or without any position as a, as a, oh, I forgot the <laughs> mission board member will not affect the way I was working and will continue working uh, towards. So there's nothing that uh, the election will impact on my, uh, on my work in uh, proof of humanity. 
Uh, I may have more pressures from my day-to-day -day work, but it's not going to be the results of the elections that decide this. Um, I just hope that uh, whatever comes to the board, uh, that they really, really, really work towards the true independence of, of proof of humanity and they don't have conflicts of interest when the time comes, uh, if the chance uh, happens where you need to decide to, to which uh, organization you respond to. And that's, that's my hope and that was uh, my, the reason I offered myself to be one of the mission boards. And that's, that's it, that's my question, my answer to that question, thank you. Thank you to uh, Luis. Now let's hear it from Santi. Well, um, I'm, I'm aware of the, the support I have from the community. I'm, I'm humbled by that. I think it's uh, very generous for the community to, to support me um, as a mission board member uh, with the delegations I received. Um, and I think that uh, that's uh, obviously a very big responsibility that I will, you know, will will make sure that I try to do the best possible job representing uh, proof of humanity in any possible way. Um, because of that, I'm also aware that, uh, you know, and I, I and I, I'm sure that all of my uh, fellow candidates here agree with me on this that we should uh, make sure that we work towards decentralization, that we should work towards uh, making ourselves uh, less and less uh, relevant to the project so it can really uh, you know, take off and hopefully in the future there will be other voices, other leaders, other champions that will be representing UBI and Proof of Humanity. Uh, and uh, I think we, we, all of us here care deeply about this and we take this responsibility very seriously. Um, um, that's why uh, I decided not to vote on myself on the, on the mission board process. I haven't voted yet, and I don't think I will vote uh, in this process. Um, so the, the voice of the community gets heard. Also, I think that ultimately my vote could help in some kind of uh, uh, um, strange scenario where we have some hostile actors trying to hijack something, uh, but you know, we're far from being the case here in this election right now. I think that every single candidate on this uh, mission board election is very, very competent, very qualified, has uh, a great understanding of the nature of the project, uh, has uh, been passionately uh, committed to the success of Proof of Humanity and UBI. Um, we might have our disagreements, uh, we might have different points of view. Uh, we might have different backgrounds, different uh, histories, diff different skills, different capacities. But I think that uh, we are all united here because we care deeply about uh, humanity and, and what this uh, technology can unleash uh, for, for the future of it. So um, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, I think that decentralization is definitely, you know, a force that is guiding us in order to build a system that is resilient and and you know we don't want to do facebook 2.0 or uh, make the same mistakes that happened in the past it's uh, it's really a very big responsibility and i think we are all gonna be working stewarding the community towards more decentralization and and making sure that we put more power into people's hands uh, than what we have done already Awesome. Thank you, Santi. Now let's hear it from Jean. So um, I, I believe that uh, if I do not get elected, I will continue is, is exactly the same way that, 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 that if I, that, um, like I, I will not stop collaborating if I, if, I, if I was not elected. Actually, it was not planned for me to, 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 to be a candidate. Uh, and I did not expect uh, to have this amount of votes. I have over 300 votes right now. And I, I feel that I'm more responsible. Uh, I, I feel that, that, that the community is, is giving a lot of uh, responsibility now uh, for this amount of votes, and regardless if I, if I get elected or not. Uh, I, I, I feel that 
they, they they are making me commit <laughs> a lot more of my time because I, I have this amount of votes. So um, I agree with Santi that uh, it's something that we we have discussed uh, in the community chats uh, when the project was just starting and Santi started to get delegations that uh, a lot of leadership will come from the from the communities itself, and it, it's I'm very happy to see that that there's a lot of candidates coming from 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 the community, and. Uh, Yes, I, I believe that probably in the next election we will have even more candidates and uh, people that there are, that have leadership even on different aspects of the of the DAO, um, just like, like as community building or maybe focused on UBI. And right now, for example, the project um, Pro Proof of Integrity. I, I'm sure that some leadership will come from that that and the experiences that they, they, they have there. So nothing will prevent me from continue working in the DAO. Uh, and of course, the, the seal of le legitimacy that I talked earlier, it's something that will, that might help me if, uh, if I get elected, but that, that's it. Uh, we'll continue doing everything that I do for, for the DAO. Awesome. Thank you, Jean. Now let's hear from our last candidate, Clement. Uh, so, yeah, like, thanks everyone who, who voted for me and who may vote in the future and are delegated. And, uh, yeah, like, if, I, if I'm not elected, like, I need to look at, at why, you know, like, uh, if it's because we think that it's better to have, like, people who are not part of the funding team uh, and, and keep people who are developing uh, on some sort of separate uh, role, in this case, that, that's very good, you know, like that's a position I, I, I could even agree with. Uh, for now, there is no official uh, dev role. So like the only way to have an official role is just, uh, is just a board. Uh, so if it's this reason, yeah, like for sure, I will still be continuing uh, contributing. Uh, now, like I know some other candidates uh, have very different vision on uh, what pro humanity should be, well, actually one candidate a very different vision on what pro humanity should be. Uh, and if it's because this vision is not the majority, uh, in this case, like it wouldn't make sense to, to contribute in a way where like my contribution would not be accepted. Uh, so I, I will need to find out, uh, I will need to find out why. So that, that would probably be another proposal, which would be okay, like uh, I'm not gonna be on the mission board. Do you still want me to be the dev team? Uh, yes, no. So only if people say, oh, no, like, I don't like what you're doing, Clement. I don't like your dev. I, I don't like the, your vision of the project. Uh, in this case, I will not attach, like, keep uh, attached. Even if the project is my, my baby, you know, uh, I will not, uh, like, stay there if people don't want me anymore. Uh, in this case, like, so that's a community project and the community has, uh, the, like, the final say. Um, so, yeah, like, probably, like, Yes, unless if I see that I even don't have the support for, for the devs, uh, in this case, uh, I will need to, to help with the transition uh, to, to another dev team. Uh, but, I, but I don't think it's the case. Like, uh, for now, like, since I'm gonna, like, people are voting for me, and I think most of the people uh, still, uh, still trust uh, my initial vision of proof of humanity as a development, and I can also see even the other candidates. I will see, like, the other candidates who we talked today, uh, they also have very similar visions, uh, so I think no matter what, uh, the community still have this original vision. And as long as the community still has this original vision uh, by making a, a secure CD resistant system, uh, which is there to be used by other applications and making the most secure system, the easiest to use and uh, the most used, as long as this is the goal of this community, uh, I, I, will, I will stay there and I will stand for the community and I will stand for the project. That's great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Clement. So there, there you are, guys. So thank you so much for being with us. I know that everyone felt the sincerity of each candidate's answer to all the questions. It's to those who just uh, came onto the call without any idea what's going on, we are, we have an ongoing voting for mission board and we have four vacant seats. We have eight candidates, only four need to be voted, but actually you can vote for them all in this snapshot because we don't have a limit. 
So, so there. Um, for those who weren't able to be with us, uh, we were get, we were gonna send them the questions also through text. So we will be able to hear their side also. But we truly really appreciate those who came here. Um, Wanu, Luis, Santi, Jean, Lemon, thank you for spending time with us and the rest of the community members. And I hope you guys, um, remember to vote. Okay. Uh, we still have the voting open up until May 28. So there you go. We will send the, um, recording also of this should you want to review the answers. So, so there, vote wisely, guys. So thank you again. Hope to see you on the next call. Thank you. Thank you, Ning. Thanks, everyone, for, for being there. Thank you. Oh, by the way, guys, we have pull up support. Just send me a message for the mint Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Okay, bye.